Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week we're taking another log from the pile of maple that's been drying for uh, just over a year I guess and we're gonna uh, try another bowl. This will be the second one out of that pile. As you can see here I have it on the woodworm screw on the four jaw chuck. Now some may ask why I didn't use a faceplate um, I only have one face plate and it was on another log at this time that I didn't want to remove because I wasn't finished with it. Uh, close to 500 RPMs to start with the tailstock uh, pulled up. I felt pretty secure in 500, uh, but it was still pretty slow going. I had to be very careful because it was not completely round. So here's a side view, just trying to get some of the unevenness uh, off of the bottom and side of the bowl so I can get the RPM up uh, faster and be more efficient. Another view, this is the bottom of the bowl with some of the bark still on. Um, some may also ask why I didn't do it the other way and have a, a, a live edge bowl, which would have been fine as well, but I wasn't going for a live edge. I wanted to see really what was inside of this log and, and what the figure was like. So I wanted most of the bark gone. So just taking some careful passes here. Um, it's still at around 500 RPMs using the bowl gouge. So as you can see, it was, it was pretty slow going in terms of making the bowl completely round and working on the bottom, uh, which was fine. I don't mind going really slow. It, 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 if the cuts are better um, and I have to sharpen more often, that, that's fine. Um, with a bowl that's out of round like this, it's, it's best to be safe because, you know, things can happen in a split second. So I was able to turn up the speed to around 750 RPMs here, uh, sharpening many times throughout. Uh, this was a, a pretty rough bowl with the bark still intact. And just going slow here, I am uh, flattening the bottom and making a tenon. So a, a view from top down here, uh, just working on the side of the bowl, getting the shape that I want. I'm still around 750 or 800 RPMs here. So a combination of push and pull cuts, stopping the lathe frequently to check on the, on the progress. Want to get as, as uh, good of cuts here as I can so there'll be uh, less time spent sanding. As you can see, there's some bark still there. There was some cracks. Here I'm using the Black Star Bond CA glue to fill those cracks. There wasn't a lot, but I just wanted to get some glue in there um, for obvious reasons. Sanded from 80 to 320 grit before I use the Axe products on this. And I wish the sanding went this fast, um, but I cut most of it out. If 
wiping off the dust with some denatured alcohol here. And after that dries, putting some sanding sealer on. And after one coat of sanding sealer, I will start with the X abrasive and then polishing paste. And a scotch bright pad in between. This is the Axe Abrasive Paste, which you've seen me use in almost all of my projects. Um, if you want to try some yourself, which I highly recommend, there's a link to the Axe website in the video description, and a coupon code of PF10 will get you 10% off. So after uh, putting the abrasive paste on, you know, take it off with a clean paper towel. making sure it all comes off until there's nothing left on the paper towel. And next is the Axe Polishing Paste. You can order these as a kit on the Axe website. So putting the polishing paste on, rubbing it in, making sure it gets over the entirety of the bowl. And then following the directions, you use the same rag with still has some polishing paste on it. Turn the lathe on, slow at first, and then speed it up. And then with a clean paper towel, buff it until it's where you want it. I like it pretty shiny, but not too shiny, if that makes any sense. And the Axe does a great job. Highly recommend the product. Again, there's a coupon code of PF10 if you want to try it and get 10% off of your order. So reversing the bowl in the four jaw chuck using the tenon with no tail stock up, at first I go pretty cautiously using the bowl gouge. I do get to speed it up here in a minute or so um, after the unevenness at the top of the bowl was removed. So now it's time for hollowing out the bowl. Best to have a very sharp tool here, of course. I stopped to sharpen, um, I would say for the inside of the bowl, I stopped to sharpen about four times. It was pretty dense, hard maple. Stopping every so often to adjust the tool rest and just check uh, the bowl and, and what it's looking like on the inside. Produced lots and lots and lots of shavings. Checking a thickness the scientific way with your hands. And just getting the, the bowl to the thickness that I want now. And the bottom to be, and the side to be rounded. With little to no tool marks to make the sanding easier. And this is where sharpening is really critical to have a very sharp tool, especially rounding those corners.
Yeah, sorry for the shavings on the camera. But as you can see, I'm, I'm just still taking some thickness off the side of the bowl, a little bit off the bottom. Getting close, stopping frequently to check it. And once it's down to the thickness, I use the sanding sealer on the inside and the rim of the bowl. And after that one coat of sanding sealer dried, use a Scotch-Brite pad in between um, using the Axe products. So the Axe abrasive paste, same process as the outside. I'll use the abrasive paste and then the polishing paste. So I get some questions in the comments a lot about what I do with the bowls. Um, I do sell them. I do have an Etsy shop if you're interested. Uh, there's a link in the video description. Um, I do some local shows probably only twice a year at this point. Um, so between online and locally, I do sell, I do sell them. I gift some of them, but I, I try to sell as many as I can to, to basically support the hobby. So finishing up with the Axe Polishing Paste here, taking it off of the four jaw chuck, and then I will reverse it and take off that tenon. But giving a little sneak peek here of the almost finished product. Really the, the grain in this was really spectacular. It was, there was some spalting um, and some interesting grain patterns as well. So that, that tenon will be coming off momentarily uh, using this uh, Longworth chuck to reverse it and take that off. Now this maxed out my uh, Longworth chuck. It almost didn't fit. It was just about the same size across. So I had to be very careful and uh, could really only get the speed up to 300 RPMs with the tailstock up. So. I just went really, really slow and, and took that off uh, with an Easywood Tools hollower, number one hollower, and uh, sanded the rest off afterwards because it was really slow going. I just wanted to get the bulk of it off with a tool. I think it's always better if you can get it off with with a tool on the lathe rather than sanding it all off. So here's a chisel getting the what was left where the tailstock was. And this is a good shot that you can see the spalting in it too. Sanding. Now in the, in the last video, well two videos ago I believe, um, I turned a log from the same tree and I used a foot on the bottom instead of a flat um, bottom. Let me know what you prefer. Let me know in the comments if you like the, the flat um, or having a, a visible foot. So putting my logo in and then some sanding sealer and we are done. Here are some pictures. Let me know what you think in the comments. I really appreciate it. I do read and, 
and reply to every single one. So thank you very much for watching and until next week, peace out.